Hello, this is the second part of the history of the temperature and in this video we'll be talking about mainly the Fahrenheit Celsius and then which is now the SI unit of temperature that is Kelvin. So first of all we will we'll be starting this video is the continuation from the part one of the history of the temperature and we're gonna stop uh, we're gonna start it from there where we left off in part in part one so basically in the part in the part one the temperature the scales were just were based on the cold, coldest and hottest point in days of of the year so there was need to create a more a more precise and universal scale because the thermometers were inaccurate so in 1701 the Danish astronomer Ole Christensen Romer introduced a thermometer whose scale was evenly was divided into 60 degrees and they were based on not on the coldest and hottest days and days of the of the year which the, those points were based on the freezing and melting point of water so who was this person his name was in 1701 Ole Christensen, Christensen, Roma. So this is the, this is the person, Romer. So he he based on he he based the thermometer on the on the freezing and melting point of water, and the freezing point was seven point five and the boiling point was sixty. So fp for freezing point freezing point was 7.5 and bp for boiling point was 60 and his scale was divided into 60 degrees so at at the same time isaac newton also devised he invented his own temperature scale in which the points were were zero from which is the freezing point of water and 12 was the temperature of healthy human body so the the so the the highest point wasn't based on the boiling point of water it was just based on the temperature of human body so zero was for freezing water isaac newton So the freezing point was zero and for temperature of the human body was 12. So this is the image of Sir Isaac Newton. And after that, after that, this is now comes the main development in the field of, of making the, the um, more precise and accurate temperature scale. So this is where we start. We will be starting first from Fahrenheit you know the the temperature scale Fahrenheit and then Celsius and then we're gonna move on to Kelvin which is basically Kelvin scale is mostly used in scientific field Fahrenheit is not used nowadays because Celsius took it over because Celsius was more accurate more refined and now it's used all over the world for every, every day to day measurements Celsius and temperature was basically for most more accurate in scientific measurements so we're going to be talking about first Fahrenheit. So the Fahrenheit was temperature scale was made by Daniel Fahrenheit. Actually, this is the image of Daniel Fahrenheit. Daniel. Oh, sorry. Mistake from the spellings. Daniel Foreign Height. So in seventeen twenty four, the Dutch f Polish uh, physicist Daniel Fahrenheit, this is the image of him, created his own scale. Actually, why he created his own scale? Because when he when he he visited Romer, he visited Romer in Copenhagen and he was inspired 
from the working of from his from the inventions of the temperature scale invented by the Romer and he was inspired to make his own temperature scale so he he set his temperature scale on two reference point zero degree Fahrenheit for salt water, water solution and 96 degree Fahrenheit for the temperature of a healthy human body so zero was for first just write down the year 1724 and Daniel Fahrenheit so zero was for salt water solution And 96 degree Fahrenheit was for human body, the average human body temperature. But in the but these points were actually changed in 1736 after Fahrenheit's death. Fahrenheit died in 1736, and they were changed. And these points were changed. So the points were changed to the freezing and boiling point of water not water not salt water solution just only in water when when Fahrenheit when Daniel Fahrenheit died and then in 1736 they changed these reference points so the reference points were then changed to change to They were changed to 32 degree Fahrenheit for freezing point of water and 212 degree Fahrenheit for boiling point of water. Point of water which is at sea level which was at sea level and standard atmospheric temperature which was for sea level which was at sea level and at standard atmospheric pressure standard atmospheric at atmospheric pressure so his scale was more refined than that of Romer and why why because it contained more it contained four times more degrees than that of his scale so it has so it had four times the degrees than that of the scale of the Romer and Daniel Fahrenheit was the first person to use a very special element that was never used before because before that water and wine was used so daniel fahrenheit was the first person to use mercury in the thermometer instead of water or wine which is first person to use mercury the fahrenheit scale became successful and it was was the primary temperature scale for many things climatic industrial and and for medical purposes only because you because the temperature you know the temperature of a healthy human body is uh, is about is about 96 98 degrees uh, from average of about 96 to 98 degrees fahrenheit so it was for it remained it the Fahrenheit temperature scale remained it remained successful and was used for primary temperature scale until the 1960s and after 1960s it was mainly replaced by another temperature scale which was the Celsius so what who invented the Celsius it was Anders Celsius
this is there is this is the guy and celsius and celsius and celsius in 1742 the swedish astronomer and celsius this is the image of him he developed the temperature scale that was based on freezing again freezing and melting point of water in first of all let's just write it down for more for convenience Celsius. So when was it? I'm just gonna use the green color. In seventeen forty two, who was Anders Celsius? And his scale was based on freezing and boiling point of water. And then in 1742, in 1743, the in 1743, the, the reference point, the points were changed to 0 degrees Celsius for freezing point of water and 100 degrees Celsius for the boiling point of water. So for, first of all, let me just write it down. 0 for freezing point. I hope you will get it free FP freezing point and then zero hundred degrees Celsius for boiling point BP so in 1743 these uh, they were changed from zero to zero for freezing point and hundred degrees for boiling point before 1743 these act these numerical values were actually the opposite in before 1743 zero was for the boiling point of water while the 100 degrees celsius was for the freezing point of water so it just doesn't i don't know why celsius did it but i think they they changed they changed it to to to, to before what daniel fahrenheit fahrenheit did as low numerical value for freezing point and higher numerical value for the boiling boiling point so i think they did, did the same and this was actually convenient so so after that before uh, okay so here i have explained the, uh, what happened before 1743 so in 17 and and in 1748 I'm just gonna write it down and then explain in 1748 the temperature was named was renamed into celsius in the honor of andal celsius so renamed to celsius in the honor of its creator andal celsius so if if this name was celsius was renamed Celsius was in 1748. So what was before the name? What was before Celsius? Celsius. What was the name of it? So it his its name the temperature scale name was actually the centigrade. Centigrade. So centigrade is is based is based on two Latin words. One is centum. It's from Latin words to Latin words. What is which is centum? Centum basically means 100 and gradus. Gradus means steps. So 100 steps. So centigrade 100 steps. So it is so that's the reason why zero was for the freezing point and 100 was for the boiling point. And because of it, he named it centigrade. Comes from two great Latin words: centum meaning 100 and grade means steps. 100 steps. And 
he and celsius also showed that the melting point of ice was unaffected by the atmospheric pressure so if ice melts it it wasn't um, it it didn't depend on atmospheric pressure pressure but when you're talking when you're talking about the boiling point the boiling point of water varied with atmospheric pressure he also showed showed this phenomena celsius now is the part of the metric system and it is used now all around the world in day to day measurements so celsius is now most commonly used around the world in every every day to day measurements so next will be the kelvin so kelvin is more accurate but it's only main is main it's only used in 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 the scientific world where you have more need more accurate measurements so kelvin is used in the scientific world while the celsius is used in common day to day world um where do i write i'm just going to write it down let's select orange and okay i think we just let's start here then kelvin this is the final one kelvin so now kelvin is the si base unit for temperature which was named after the british scientist william thomson also known as no lord kelvin so this is the image of him william thomson also known as lord kelvin so he he was uh, as if you don't if you don't know about my for very first video the introduction of uh, physics uh, make sure to check the check that video out so in that video i also talked about he was also the person who said that physics is done what remains now is more accurate measurements he said that basically physics was just done accurate measurements only we need that and it's just all over until quantum mechanics came and ruined everything so he was the person also cont his contribution is also for the kelvin scale so lord kelvin wanted a scale a scale that uses absolute zero as its null point what is what it uses absolute zero as its null point he wanted that temperature scale let's just start with red oh it's not red okay he wanted absolute zero as null point he wanted absolute zero as his null po none point null point kelvin is not referred and written as degree unlike the fahrenheit and celsius we know we when we you, you when we use fahrenheit we say 30 for example 30 degrees fahrenheit or when when we use uh, celsius we we uh, when we use celsius we we say for example 30 degrees celsius but in terms of kelvin we just don't use the degrees we just say kelvin for example 15 kelvin now kelvin scale as you know mostly used in scientific fields while the celsius is for everyday usage now in 14 in 1848 in 1848 William Thomson Lord Kelvin proposed the need for a scale in which infinite gold infinite gold wait just just gonna write it down uh, infinite gold here at that time the absolute zero was referred to as infinite gold which is basically absolute zero absolute zero 
he wa- he wanted a scale in which the null point scales in null point actually the zero point from where every measurement was will be done w- will be the absolute zero so he calculated he he was actually the one who calculated the absolute zero and it came to be very precise value now if he calculated about his his values was one a minus 273 degrees celsius as he he used the air thermometers of that time so minus 273 degrees celsius so this is r- really close number because now it's only about the difference of 0.15 just gonna remove it so he was really really accurate with it considering the fact he was using an old school equipment at at, at that time and then in 1954 in 1954 in 1954 the general conference on weight and measures gave the kelvin its mon- its modern definition by using the triple point of water as its second defining point and it's and assigned the triple point of water to be exactly 273.16 kelvin 0 degree celsius so triple point of water uh actually i'm just gonna as this is the definition for it so i'm just gonna use a li- um, different color triple point of water which was 273 273.16 kelvin actually you you can now actually see here that i didn't what I, i didn't write is a degree is actually doesn't have any any degrees it's just a number and then kelvin to 273.16 kelvin which is 0 degree celsius as you can see we use degree here degree celsius so what is basically now you're be wondering what is this what do you mean by this triple point of water so actually as you all know that there are three states of matter well four precisely if to be more accurate we have liquid solid gas and then we have plasma just throw the plasma away so <laughs> we you have three states of matter liquid solid gas triple point of water means water having these three phases at the same time so water in liquid solid gas happening at the same time actually this is crazy thinking but it, it, it there is a, the triple point of water and that based on the it, it is based on the atmospheric pressure So zero degree Celsius triple point water, which is two seventy three point sixteen Kelvin. I was just about to say degrees Kelvin. <laughs> I'm sorry. So on sixteen November two thousand eighteen, it was again changed on sixteen November. Two thousand and eighteen. The Kelvin was redefined as. actually i have copied the definition so i'm just gonna paste it here just gonna select some word because its definition is just quite big okay all right here we have it the temp- the kelvin symbol k is the si unit of thermodynamic temperature it is defined by taking the fixed numerical value of the boltzmann constant k to be 1.380649 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 23 i'm sorry about it but apparently this text doesn't include any a uh, scientific format so that's why it's it has written as a 10 minus 23 but it it's actually 10 to the power minus 23 when expressed in the unit joule per kelvin this is k power minus 1 which is basically 
जाउल पॉल कैलवन विच इज एक टू किलोग्राम मीटर स्क्वेयर बाय सेकेंड स्क्वेयर कैलवन वेयर दी किलोग्राम मीटर एंड सेकेंड आर डिफाइन इन टर्म्स ऑफ एच सी एंड डेल्टा वी सी एस एच फॉर प्लॉन्स कॉन्सेस सी फॉर दी कॉन्सेस स्पीड ऑफ लाइट एंड डेल्टा वी सी एस मीन दी फ्रीकुंसी ऑफ दी ऑफ दी सीजियम वन थ्री थ्री एटम सो दिस वॉज दी वैल्यू वॉज वॉज फर्स्ट ऑन दी ट्रिपल पॉइंट ऑफ वाटर एंड देन इट वॉज अगेन चेंज टू वॉज असाइन टू दी यूनिवर्सल कॉन्सटेंट दी बोट्स मैन कॉन्सटेंट विच इज टू बी वन पॉइंट थ्री एट जीरो सिक्स फोर नाइन मल्टीपल बाई टेंस पावर माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री जाओ पर कैलवन सो वॉट डू यू मीन बाई बोट्स मैन कॉन्सेप्ट वॉट इज बोट्स मैन कॉन्सेप्ट बोट्स मैन कॉन्सटेंट इज द प्रोपोर्शनैलिटी फैक्टर दैट ही लेट्स द एवरेज कैनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ पार्टिकल्स इन अ गैस विद द थर्मोडाइनमिक टेम्परेचर ऑफ द गैस सो इट बेसिकली प्रोवाइड्स द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी टू द रैंडम थर्मल मोशन ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स सो वन कैलवन बेसिकली बेसिकली इट मीन्स दैट द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी दैट द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू दैट द टेम्परेचर दैट द एनर्जी हीट actually the heat is related to the random thermo motion of the particle so you 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 know as we heat up the gas the the the, the atoms in the, the molecules of the gas start wandering around in 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 more, in more speed so this relates to, to that which is the boltzmann constant so in accurate in more accurately more accurately it boltzmann constant is saying 1.38 जीरो सिक्स फोर नाइन मल्टीप्लाई बाई टेंस माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री जाओ पार कैलमन बोर्ड्स मैन बेसिकली सेइंग लुक दिस इज द कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू एंड बाय पार टेम्परेचर बार बाय पार कैलवन देर इज द चेंज ऑफ थर्मल एनर्जी ऑफ अबाउट वन पॉइंट थ्री एट जीरो सिक्स फोर नाइन मल्टीप्लाई बाई टेंस पावर माइनस ट्वेंटी थ्री जाओ so per kelvin there is a thermal energy change of a thermodynamic temperature Ch- the change is about the thermal di- the thermal energy changes about 1.380 649 multiplied by 10 power minus 23 joule so one kelvin is equal to the change in thermodynamic temperature that results in a change of thermodynamic energy kt by 1.380649 multiply by 10 to the power minus 23 joule just going to write it down for again 1k will be equal to 1.380649 multiply by 10 to the power minus 23 boltzmann constant is saying that the per kelvin or say 1 kelvin which is the thermodynamic temperature is equal is is equal to the change of 1.380649 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 23 joule of energy what energy which is the kinetic energy the kinetic energy of the random motion of the gas so i hope you have you have understood it and if for some reason you you didn't uh, in the in the in when we t- when we'll go through the thermodynamic and temperature we will go through the boltzmann constant and it, i will explain it to you more thoroughly because as because um, in the in these si units i really don't have much time so i have to explain it just a uh, uh, in a short detail so i hope you understood the boltzmann constant basically saying 1 kelvin equal to one to this numerical amount of a joule uh, of kinetic energy of those uh, random motion of atoms so uh, i think this is it this is probably it so i hope you have liked this in, in video and found it informative so please like this video and share it to share it to everyone and sub- please subscribe to my channel for more for more videos and i'll see you in the next video thank you and goodbye